Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vince. We'll be having our annual viewing of Christmas in Bear Mountain later this evening. <laughs> we got Chris. It's it's German for the mutant. The. <laughs> well, I'm Kia. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, we're okay. So we're reading some uh, Donald Duck Christmas books with Scrooge McDuck, and it's going to be very exciting. Vince, what was your quote from? It's actually from the new Ducktales series. Uh, oh. Uh, uh, the Christmas episode last year, uh, last Christmas, ironically, uh, Mrs. Beakley uh, invited the kids to go watch the cartoon Christmas on Bear Mountain in the other room. How interesting. Okay, that's Callback. Callback. Um, yeah, so uh, a couple of old Donald Duck uh, famous Christmas stories by Carl Barks. Uh, stick around afterwards. We're going to keep reading Marvels. Uh, we're on issue number two there. Although I feel like uh, they both, uh, Chris, you said, probably might take equal time on this podcast. Uh, Marvels is a pretty dense uh, book that we're reading uh, issue at a time. And uh, Donald Duck, I mean, don't get me wrong. Donald Duck is great. Not quite as dense as uh, Marvels, I might say. Um Am I wrong though? There's a lot of like social stuff going on here. Okay, so we've do- we've talked about uh, the ducks before, right? What did we read? Uh, um, it was like a year or two ago. It, uh, it could make me mean longer. Lost oh, in the yeah. Andes with the uh, square eggs. The square yeah. eggs. That's right. Um, so this time around, uh, you know, Christmas season, of course, right around the corner, uh, the holidays, uh, of course, and Bear Mountains. We are going to read Christmas on Bear Mountain. From 1947, I think it said it was, and uh, which is also the first appearance of Scrooge McDuck. Very exciting. Uh, and then Scrooge McDuck later returns in a, another Christmas issue uh, called A Christmas for Shacktown uh, from 1951. Uh, and these were both uh, – uh, we had uh, Carl Barks doing these who uh, – we talked about him last time, but I think worth talking about him again. He's uh, the father of all things duck in the Disney universe, right? Uh, he, how else would you describe? I mean, like of the of the canon. So he was brought in actually as an animator. He was born in 1901. He was brought in as an animator for Donald Duck shorts, and his he directed the first appearance of the nephews Huey, Dewey, and Louie. So they didn't ex- exist before his his direction. But he seems a little curmudgeonly because um, he <laughs> he said like I don't like having to direct by committee, and he found that drawing comics allowed him to do whatever the fuck he wanted, and he didn't care. Um, and so that's what he did. Um, but there, the Donald Duck comics at the time were in rotation where they didn't, they weren't always done by the same artist. And I, I mean, I worked um, with some people who worked on Sonic the Hedgehog, the Archie comic, and it was the same way. Like he would do the art for like every three or four issues. Like, you know, they didn't have a consistent like writing or art team because um, it's the 40s and it's, you know, ancillary material. Yeah. Um, like I understand it. Uh, and so, but people figured out that he, that there was one artist that was particularly good. They called him the good duck artist because nobody was actually credited because the 40s going to yeah. be the 40s, Disney going to be Disney. Yeah, um, it just says Walt Disney presents. Yeah. yeah. So, but people figured out that he was the good duck artist. And um, so, actually, a lot, some of these issues uh, I'm reading, the, is it Fantagraphics? Um, I don't know exactly who made this. Um, but whoever republished um, this volume, they, they they even put in there like, we don't actually know what some of these shorts are called um, because Carl Barks, even in his like um, writing to fans, sometimes changed the name of the story just depending on how like he misremembered it. So, um, <laughs> so is this, yeah, it is Fantagraphics. It's a really good collection. They're a little pricey, but they're really good. Um, but Christmas on Bear Mountain is known as the first appearance of Scrooge McDuck. And specifically, it was uh, – they told him, you need to write a Christmas comic. And he's like, fuck off. I'm not writing a Christmas comic. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, well, I'll put Scrooge in it because Christmas Carol is popular, but I'm not going to actually do Christmas Carol shit. Um, like, if, like cause I, in my head, Mickey Christmas Carol was the first appearance of Scrooge McDuck, and then he got added. That was my like headcanon as a dumb like five-year-old. Um, but Mickey Christmas Carol is like from the 80s. Uh, and, but – Scrooge McDuck is just a rich old duck and Christmas Carol was like popular as a book and as like films and uh, TV and radio plays at this time. So 47. So people knew of Ebenezer Scrooge. No right. You see, I thought the uh, origin of Scrooge McDuck would be that uh, educational film about saving money that he's in from like the <laughs> 60s. Oh, that's right. He is in that one too. Uh I uh, I really like to imagine Scrooge McDuck, especially as he's drawn in these first comics with like a really nice coat and a cane, as like 
the Batman Beyond version of Darkwing Duck as he's like growing older and <laughs> still has all this uh, all this fortune. In my in my personal, I know that's not how it works, but uh, yeah. I would like for that to be how. It works. I I feel like he would find that insulting because he would think Darkwing Duck is a clown. That's uh, probably accurate. That's probably accurate. <clears throat> um, all right, all right, all right. Uh, I think we should jump into this. I, I'd never read these before. Had you guys read these? No, I hadn't. I mean, I, I'd seen the images from the first appearance of Scrooge because they're actually heavily referenced in the new DuckTales cartoon. They, like, okay. ripped panels straight from this, um, which is really interesting. Um, people are bigger nerds than me on the internet. Um, we're talking about DuckTales. <coughs> like, oh, my gosh, that, that same image is from the first appearance of Scrooge McDuck. And then I'm like, well, that's a Christmas book, and I love this DuckTales cartoon. It's time to... It's time to read some Scrooge uh, comics. Time to read some Scrooge. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, I actually, I think I've read these before. I definitely read Christmas on Bear Mountain before. I don't remember the Shackton one. I used to have a couple of these collections. I think I sold them, uh, so I, or at least I couldn't find them. So, but I, I definitely remember Bear Mountain. <clears throat> all right, let's get into Bear Mountain here. Um, so it starts the way. All good uh, Christmas stories do, which is uh, somebody is sitting around complaining that they don't have enough money for the holidays and they don't know what they're going to do. Isn't that funny, though, that like even in the <laughs> really 40s and like a classic story is like we can't afford this capitalistic holiday. Like, yeah, <laughs> that seems that's to... great. I instantly love Carl Barks. So I'm just like, yep, yep. He he knows what he's doing here. Uh, and, and here we do, he and Louis say, like, hey, wait a minute. We have that rich Uncle Scrooge. Maybe he'll remember us and get us something. Nah, that guy's an asshole. He probably won't. <laughs> uh, which, and, and, like, you jump right into Scrooge McDuck just talking about how everybody hates him and he hates everybody and that's fine. And he decides that the best way to spend the holidays is going to be to prank uh, Donald Duck and Huey, Dewey, and Louie, kind of. <laughs> Well, the, uh, well, yeah, basically this rich asshole is like, I'm bored and I hate the holidays. The only thing that will cheer me up is to prey upon poor people. Like that's yeah. – like that's – I'm like, Meh. I mean this checks out, but yeah. – <laughs> Poor well, family members as well, which is just, ooh, this guy. Yeah, I mean he thinks Donald's a, a real loser and he wants to prove it and then that will be his Christmas, uh, you know <laughs> – It'll make him feel better for the holidays. Yeah, he hates how everyone else is having fun. He wants his own fun. Uh, it's, it's, so, a classic, it's a classic. I remember like being told, like, if a bully picks on you, it's only because they're trying to make themselves feel better. And exactly. I'm like, and I'm like, ah, this checks out. This checks out. But I, 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 yeah, this is Scrooge's first appearance. But, I mean, it is classic. Like, Ebenezer Scrooge is like, fuck this holiday. It's stupid. Um, yeah. So there's the parallel, I guess, with the name Scrooge. Uh, yeah, so he sends them a letter saying, hey, listen, you're going to have the best Christmas ever. It's going to be in, uh, you know, this this cabin of mine up on Bear Mountain. It's going to be well stocked. There's going to be presents. Uh, go have yourself a great time. Uh, and he's thinking, OK, now I'm going to catch Donald getting scared by bears and I'm going to prove he's a big old wimp. Uh, and otherwise, I'm taking everything. I'm going to take everything back after that. Uh, but hey, maybe he'll surprise me and show that he's got some some you know some guts behind him. Nah, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. I do love yeah. though that like he stocks it with like it's just like bags that just say candy on them and yeah. puzzles. Um, you know, Carl Barks doesn't have time to to draw individual candy. It's just a bag. It says candy on it. I do think it's weird though that the ducks eat turkeys. I feel like that's weird <laughs> for me. Um, um, it's very close. They're also like they're sleeping in the beds at some point, and they're like, "Ooh, feather beds, yeah!" Like that seems equally like. I mean, I mean, I do, <laughs> I do love a good human hair pillow. You know, I love yeah. that. <laughs> like it's weird. Uh, it's like that moment in Fantasia two thousand where uh, Donald is Noah and two ducks go past him, and he looks at the camera like, "What?" <laughs> But, you know, I, I, I do love it. And it is weird because Donald talks and this is not that. Right, right. Um, which I don't even know how to, like, actually articulate words with the. So it's just like, oh, woe is me. I'm Donald Duck. Oh, fooey. And I'm just like, that has always thrown me off by these mm -hmm. Duck comics is Donald being articulate. Like, it messes me up. Uh, and so I imagine that maybe he he. I mean, I feel like even in the cartoons, he would talk with a. But you could hear words coming out of there. No, no, it was just hard who, to understand. Yeah, but it's more like angry. He doesn't seem like right, very right. But man, like I don't I've never been able to articulate a word with my Donald Duck Maybe. voice. I've never so been able to. So in my no. 
in my mind, that's exactly how he's talking in these comics. But Huey, Dewey, and Louie can understand him because they're ducks. Yes. There was and everyone else. Yeah, everyone else has just kind of been trained to understand these ducks. There, there was one episode where he had to be like heroic, and he got a of the new Ducktales, and he got a voice box, and it was Don Cheadle who voiced him. Um, so that was fun. That's cute because <laughs> I get they needed uh, him to do emotional heavy lifting, and they couldn't do it with his voice. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much what but, happened. Uh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, it does, we should say Donald Duck is not a hero. Donald Duck is a coward. Even Huey, Dewey, and Lewis know this. Uh, he, he, Donald's like, ah, who's afraid of bears? Like, uh, it's you, but we're going anyway. Well, I, I think he's it. afraid because he already like hears that it's Bear Mountain. So he's like, even before Scrooge, like, I don't even know. Does Scrooge even? Like, okay. It, okay. Scrooge doesn't so, even fuck with them. They're just afraid of a potential of a bear. Yeah, Scrooge is gonna yeah. dress up in a big bear costume, which is very, a very good costume. It can make different facial expressions, uh, and it's like it so much bigger than him. I don't know how this thing works. It's it has to be good. some kind of animatronic i don't know he's very rich very rich uh, only the he, best he scares his butler <laughs> he's yeah yeah who jumps out the window um he is so rich he's gonna take this limo up to the cabin uh but there's too much snow he like can't get there in time he says all right i'm gonna have to wait till the next morning to scare them uh, he's pissed because he's like god damn it they're gonna eat too much of my food <laughs> <laughs> like, i put this food out they're actually gonna have like a good holiday this is dumb yeah He's just sitting there stewing in the back of his limo, like rubbing the back of his cane, like, I can't fucking wait to get these assholes. What does he say? <laughs> this means those shiftless relatives will have a whole day of eating and guzzling at my expense. And I never <laughs> gave a man a free meal in my life. <laughs> yeah. This guy sucks, man. Um, so they're having a great time at the cabin. Uh, Huey, Dewey, and Louie really want a Christmas tree. So they make uh, Donald go out and, uh, you know, uh, uh, chop one down for them. Uh, he's, got, like, so scared. He runs back inside. He thinks there's a bear, but it's just like a bunny. Uh, well, just all to show tracks, yeah. Yeah. He, we're just, you know, we have to remember that Donald Duck is a major wuss. Uh, but they find this tree that suspiciously has a massive hole in the center of it. It's hollow. They do not check the hole, and they bring this tree back. Uh... Guess what's in this hole, y'all? Guess what's in this damn hole? It's a little baby bear. <laughs> what? This thing is kind of adorable, too. It uh, runs up to one of the teddy bear toys, and it's like smacking it in the face. Uh, starts messing around with all their stuff, and everyone's like, man, I, there's a there's a bear in here. Like, it, we can hear it, but it's always just quiet enough and, uh, you know, starts eating their food. And so the ducks are on a mission now. This like it's it, this uh, this bear is fucking up everything. Um, there and are then, several uh, Disney shorts that are involved with an animal coming in the house via a tree accidentally. I feel like it's a good <laughs> classic uh, uh, trope plot uh, for cartoons that everyone can get behind. And has enough visual humor behind it that it's always good, no matter yeah, what. Because I, I definitely know there's a Chippendale one that, where Pluto is like destroying the Christmas tree, trying to get Chippendale. I know there's one. Mm-hmm. Um, meanwhile, I love the bear when he smacks the teddy bear. He's like, "Fuck this bear!" Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's instantly <laughs> jealous. <laughs> It's my that might be my my panel of the week actually the bear and the bear there's another one coming up later in this comic I, like honestly panel of the weeks from Alex Ross doing Marvels right but that's not fair <laughs> you got to do a real panel of the week here. <laughs> um so meanwhile there's a real bear who is missing its baby because that's how bears work they got families too they're not just uh, they're not just dumb beasts roaming the 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 snow. They got their families. So Mama Bear is coming looking for Baby Bear. And uh, they like everyone is terrified. Donald Duck is pissing his pants, jumping out the window. But these bears just start like they find all the food. They're having a great time. They eat so much they pass out. And they're just like sleeping by the fire. Uh, this checks out. This does happen with bears. I've seen, it does bear, happen. I've seen bear videos where like people are getting like, go away, bear, and they'll just play piano, eat all the like fruit roll-ups, and then fall asleep. Um, they'll just go through your garbage. <laughs> uh, Donald goes to check it out up close. The bear like lets out a sigh, and Donald gets so scared, he faints, passes out right in the bear's arms right next to him. Uh, <laughs> so at this point, 
uh, Scrooge finally shows up in his giant bear costume with the tongue hanging out. I like that tongue hanging out. Uh, and he's like, what? This is not what I expected to see. This this damn there's a there's a real damn bear. Uh, and he's terrified of the bear. Huey, Dewey, and Louie are chasing this bear. The bear's riding roller skates. Uh, he runs to the other room and <laughs> sees Donald Duck sleeping arm in arm with this uh, real bear. And he's like, "Oh my god! I thought I thought my nephew was a damn damn coward, but holy shit, he's braver than I am! Oh my god! Uh, I thought and, he was a coward, but man, Donald's fucking hardcore. He's laying with yeah, bears, like. laying with <laughs> bears." Uh, and I thought, you know, it's a pretty good punchline to this whole thing, honestly. Uh, but Don, uh, as a thank you, like as a real present, Scrooge gives Donald a bearskin rug. But uh, Donald passes out when he sees it, and Scrooge doesn't understand. Like I, for a second, I thought he might have been scared. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Uh, and that's the end. <laughs> good, good, good times. I, I was reading on this. Yeah, what, go go on. I, no, I'm sorry. I really, I just kind of like narrated the whole plot of that one. It's too like fun and giggly not to just like talk about. We can talk about the art and everything else though. Go ahead, Fitz. Oh, well, I was reading like this academic article that was like, this is what gave Scrooge like the taste for adventure, and like he was a curmudgeonly old man, and now this is what like prompts him to do like Ducktail shit and like lead adventures. And I'm like, I mean, that's reading a bit much into it. I don't think Carl Barks was thinking that far ahead on this like work yeah. for hire. Um, like, I think it was a morality play that turned out just fine. Yeah. 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 Um, especially, like, when we get into the next one, which is, like, you know, this is not, uh, <laughs> it's not the Scrooge McDuck I really know. Yeah. Uh, this, I don't know, like, it, it is interesting to see this version of Scrooge and then compare it to uh, the more adventurous and, like, fun and happy one, who, like, it... It makes sense for a kid's cartoon because you don't want an old curmudgeon on, on the screen. But um just really makes sense for his character in the cartoon, do you know? Like, what's up with this guy? I mean, he's like, I mean, the th- yeah, cause the fact that he's like curmudgeonly and cheap yet like is, I mean, the fact that he's like a hero that has like bottomless pockets to like finance like anything is like really a really good plot device because he can do fucking mm-hmm. anything. And he's just like wants treasure. So he's very much like Indiana Jones. In fact, Indiana Jones borrows a lot from him. Wildly enough, um, including like I think the big like rock that uh, Indiana Jones runs from that big ball um, is based off a Ducktales comic. Or a duck. Yeah, it's, it's based yeah. off a, it's based off a Scrooge or a Donald comic. Yeah, Indiana- I feel like there's a lot there's a lot of cracked articles about like ten things that are based on Donald Duck, like Inception. There's like a dream machine in a Scrooge yeah. McDuck story, or maybe yeah. it's a Donald. I can't remember if the Ducktales logo is borrowing from Indiana Jones or Indiana Jones is borrowing from the Duck logo. I can't remember, but there's a lot of um, back and forth on that. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's it's. I wouldn't call it high art, and I wouldn't even say it's like a great comic. But it's a f- lot of fun. If I was six, I would have like this would have been right up there with my Calvin and Hobbes books in terms of like just this is absolutely pleasant. I don't have much nostalgia for it right now, but I'm like it's fun. It's pleasant. I'll read more of this. Uh, I forgot to mention my panel of the week. Which is, I think, the best. Like, it, it's just zany and silly enough to hold your attention through such a, like, basic plot. Um, but Scrooge poking his head out of the bear costume with the bear also, like, staring ahead in awe. It's like a great double head thing, which, um, that's all. I like it's Carl I, I, I like the bear riding a roller skate. I think that shit's hilarious. I, I think I do have more nostalgia for all this stuff because, like, this type of cartoon zaniness is 100%, like, uh, everything that I love. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I was I'm, much I'm, more of a I'm Looney into Tunes it. kid than the Disney cartoons. You know, like, me Disney too. I, I really was too. I don't know why this very much feels like it scratches the same itch, though. Mm-hmm. It almost, uh, like, maybe it's Carl Barks, though. But, like, something, something about it feels just slightly more adult to me, and I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think we talked about it in the last Carl Barks thing, but this was a lot more popular, like internationally. Uh, in the U.S., it was. It's not. I mean, it was still successful, but internationally, it was hugely successful. <clears throat> that makes sense to yeah. me. It does mm-hmm. have that. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. I will. My only kind of. I think that the nephews. There's no distinction between them. Um, I don't think. I don't even know if until the most recent Ducktales cartoon, I could tell you what the difference between Huey, Dewey, and Louie is. 
Like I yeah. definitely cannot tell you. I don't know anything. Yeah, the um, only the only shows uh, I could tell them apart are the New Deck Tales and of course Quack Pack. Oh, Quack Pack! Is that the one where they're teenagers? Yes. Uh, they're too I cool. never watched. Quack I remember Pack. seeing that like on Disney XD, like my grandma's house. It was a channel I did not get, and I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Um, it, was it, it good? was still it was still on the Disney afternoon, but it was like way past the prime of Disney. Yeah, afternoon. I think it was like late '90s. I remember seeing it once and thinking like being like a little like jerk and be like this is not my ducktales but is it yeah. I, is it on disney plus i wonder i think it is i'm pretty sure it is i might give that a look i might i'm sure it's not good uh, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna recommend a quack pack the only thing that's this... held up for me is recess as far as like those cartoons go <laughs> uh, that's a good one the, you know this might be interesting to go back and think about the first time a franchise was like you know ruined for you not ruined for you necessarily, but like you know, where something came in, it was like you know this was wrong. Not and you just like rejected not, it like outright, like without like sight unseen, ducks. like yeah. Because even like Ninja Turtles, uh, I, I still know. give like an opportunity, uh, right. but I don't like. There's Quackbreaker. I was like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> uh, so, okay, a Christmas so, for Shack Town. Yeah. Uh, so this one was about. Four years later, I believe. Uh, same kind of deal. Carl Barks uh, shows up. And b- between these two uh, stories, I think we had seen some other uh, Scrooge McDuck stuff kind of come in and out. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, ne- never intended to be a, like a, a big solo character or anything. Just or like kind of lore a, a or character. anything. I don't think yeah. there's like any type of like lore or continuity that was intended here at this stage. Yeah, he's just rich and curmudgeonly. That's all we need. Oh. To I mean, I, I can tell, though, like this first page, you can instantly tell like there's like way more detail. The line works a lot more fine. Yeah. Like, and and, they, and, more and the nephews are have different colors this time as opposed to all wearing like black shirts. And you're like, oh, mm-hmm. this is the art has changed yeah. a bit here. Um, and like these. Oh, so they're in Shacktown where everybody's poor and they have the um, what kind of animals are they? These are all beagles, right? Because beagles are like the lower class in this duck universe, right? Yeah, I think I was when I was in college. I was definitely like, oh, it seems like all the all the dogs are are either criminals or or lower class, and all the ducks are rich. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much how it goes. Uh, but they are drawn with so much detail; they just look so sad. Like yeah. I'm super They're like people with dog Bart- noses. Yeah. yeah. Well, like sad people that you feel bad for. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what Huey and Dewey and Louie are doing walking through this area because, like, man, this is rough. It doesn't look anything well, like uh, and, anywhere else. And Daisy's like, why did they go to Shack Town? Yeah. Um, and they get so sad walking through there and seeing all these kids who don't have a Christmas. And they when they run into Daisy, they're like... Man, that's that's why we're like we're bummed out about it. This kid, these kids need a Christmas, and these poor kids make us feel like fat pigs. Yeah, 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 it is funny that they compare themselves to pigs when pigs are also like a society, uh, you know, another animal that they run into in this story. Mm-hmm. And like a <laughs> oh, yeah, they do. Uh, like a typical a rich white lady, uh, Daisy decides that she's the best person to help these kids out, and she's gonna throw them she's a gonna big blindside Christmas. Them. She's she's going to save them. (laughs) She's going to throw them the biggest Christmas party they've ever had. It's going to make all their troubles go away. And she's going to give them a toy train. That's true. So she's going to give them a nice meal for one, but then Mm -hmm. like longer term, they're getting a toy train. So she's she's approaching it from both angles. Good job, Savior. Good job, White Savior. That's true. Good job. Good job. Uh, and but they need fifty dollars to make this happen. They need twenty five for the meal, twenty five for the toy train. Uh, and of course she goes to Donald for it. Donald is same as last time. He's just sitting here worried about money. He's trying to figure out how he can make his $5 stretch with all the gifts he needs to buy. And it's not going to work. Uh, but everyone agrees that, uh, Donald, uh, is going to figure out how to get some money. Uh, as Donald goes to uncle Scrooge, uh, who is trying. <laughs> I think this is one of my favorite kind of visual gags is how all this money is drawn in this safe that uh, Scrooge is really just trying to fit it all in the safe. It is busting out so hard. He just doesn't have room to keep all this money. It's a good visual gag for this whole like we just need $50. Yeah. And I mean calculating for inflation from 1951 we're talking more like 500 bucks. But still. Um, but right. still 500 bucks. Um, and he's shoveling cash, like coins and like bags and, and bills 
into this door, like trying to cover it shut. And he's like, I can't spare $50. What are you, insane? <laughs> he has this cannon ready to shoot anybody coming to his, his home. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, he is a person, is, is a very cartoony. Like, I like that so many of the sources of weird cartooniness come from Uncle Scrooge. There's the fake bear in the last one and all this weird uh, money stuff with him here. There's a little bulldozer in one, in one panel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like trying to flatten the money to to get it in there. Uh, yeah, he's not having any of it. But finally, he agrees. Like, oh yeah, he's like a toy train, a toy fucking train. That's what you want my money for, Jesus Christ. Uh, and he says, no. How about this? If you can bring me, if you can prove that you can earn twenty five dollars, then I'll bring you the other twenty five. Uh, I don't remember why such that's a, such a. This is such a rich person nonsense thing. Like, I work hard, <laughs> then I will match it, whatever. Yeah. I, could, yeah. I mean, I could just do it, but I'm not going to because I'm going to teach yeah. you. I want you to lesson. prove it. Like, the, the Shacktown benefit, they're not proving to him any like type of, like, um, I can't remember the word, a utility or anything. It's a weird, it's a weird lesson. I don't like it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if only we could tax Uncle Scrooge and then give his money to... Uh, you know, society through uh, government. I mean, like, I, are I, you I, a socialist? I, 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 in 1951, wasn't like the tax rate like super high on on the super wealthy at this point? Yeah, it was like and, 90% or something like that. And Scrooge like that. still has this amount. So, mm-hmm. so, so, yeah, he's um, is very rich. He's doing fine. Um, he, he's so the he, world's richest duck, and darn well going to stay that way. Yeah. <laughs> There's a sign uh, on his door that says that. I it's it. a good sign to, to keep on your door. Uh, so yeah, I, I wish that it had the like panel economy. If this had been like 1990 something, it would have had two separate panels of world's richest duck. And then like the sign folding out. <laughs> Cause that would have um, been funny. Or him taping it up on there. Uh, like as a, as a fuck you, man. <laughs> um, so Donald tells his plan to Daisy and the, the nephews, and they're like, all right, we can each like figure out a way to raise five bucks and get it going. And you so know, the mortgage, kids are going. We're gonna mortgage our Christmas. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Why not? We don't need a Christmas of our own. We can we can uh, help these kids out. Um, and Donald tries to like shake someone down on the street for money, and he's like, I gotta go pay Scrooge. He's like, oh yeah, that's a good excuse. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. That was the pig. Uh, he decides he's going to dress up as an old relative. Uh, but that backfires because that old relative owes Scrooge some money, and <laughs> with interest, it's way too much. That 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 didn't work. Um, we've got uh, which I how think is, is, I, I, I'm sure that relative was referenced in one of the Don Rosa Life and Times of, of Scrooge. I th- it must have been. It must have been because he like mined all of these Barks comics to make uh, Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck, mm-hmm. like somehow like chron- like- chronologically work. I feel like I got to read all these dumb little ones and then read the Carl Barks thing just to like appreciate it all. <laughs> I feel like I, I'm, I'm probably going to have to do both. I'll probably read the Carl Bar or the Rosa first, look at all the annotations, and then read all the real comics and then come back and be like, holy shit, I can't yeah, believe yeah, I did yeah. this. Like, yeah. yeah, I've read it, uh, but I read it first. So I've, I need to reread it now that I've read some Carl Barks to mm-hmm. see what it's referencing. Um, so the way that. Uh, oh, yeah. So. Uh, it's so weird that uh, now Donald figures out the best way to get some of this money is to get five dollars from Scrooge himself as part of the twenty five. He's gonna get money from Scrooge to prove that he can get money, and then Scrooge is gonna give him more money, right? Yeah, something like that. Well, he's he's gonna prove he's gonna provide a valuable service to Scrooge, then get the money by proving the valuable service to him, right? right and right, then right, Scrooge right. will yes. be like, "Wow, you you do have a job, you, even you though you it's, you're that. working for a family member." Which I feel like Scrooge would not be a fan of. Um, um, it's true. It's true. He wouldn't. But his plan is he's going to help Scrooge get rid of his rats. Uh, Scrooge doesn't have rats. So, of course, Donald sneaks a rat in. And <laughs> Scrooge is scared that his rat's going to eat all his money. And again, it's, uh, not like, it's not like Mickey Mouse or a proportionate uh, size to them. It's literally like a tiny little rat. It's just a tiny mouse, yeah. yeah. I've, the, um, the, the animal logic in this, in this universe is, is all over the map. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> What if it was a tiny human? Would that be creepy? Oh, Ugh. my God. Ugh. Yeah. Um, all right. So 
this uh, <laughs> tiny rat yeah, gets caught by Donald, who gets $5, goes back to the rest of the family so they can all pool their resources and see if they got the $25. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I, I like how Uncle Scrooge is like, a deal's a deal, even though he's like, I'm pretty sure you just screwed me over. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. Donald's like, oh, I just happen to have some cheese in my pocket. That'll lure the rat. <laughs> Uh, my favorite joke throughout either of these is when Donald goes to pull out the five dollars he earned, and he says, "Oh damn it! I put it in the same pocket as the rat, and the rat ate it." Uh, I really love that joke. I don't know why it tickled me so much. Uh, I think because I was like, "Man, that's a stupid thing to be worried about—a rat eating your money." And then it happened later, and I, I, I think that's that's good storytelling. <laughs> um, then that Donald paper. <laughs> Donald is so mad he walks outside and like throws his hat on the ground sits on a bench and then somebody throws a dollar in there uh, and he's like oh my god I could be a beggar <laughs> um, and <laughs> Scrooge McDuck walking by uh, in like I think his most classic uniform that we've uh, seen is like his regular top hat and cane his walking around with red his blue, blue coat with his blue coat yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and he he's like, what are you doing? How'd you earn this money? Just sitting here? Five minutes? You got a dollar? Pfft, forget you. I'm Get out of here. This is my money from now on. He, he steals uh, Donald's idea. And he's like, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to roll up my collar, look like a rich, like, a, like I'm not a rich person. <laughs> uh, yeah, like try as hard as I can to look schlubby. Uh, sit here, earn some free money. Uh, man, Scrooge what an never ass. really thinks about like what's like the best use of his time to make money. I know, right? How, I like. How did he? Like, I guess that's why we gotta learn how he made all this money from John Rosa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mostly adventuring, it turns out. I guess it's just so. stealing, just... A, just stealing giant things is is a better use of your time than sitting at your bench. I think I you know maybe Scrooge will try anything once, and that's why <laughs> that's he'll true. try some of that, out that outlandish adventures. Uh, it'll you know it doesn't I, always work. I listened to a podcast called Get Rich Nick where it's people use a bunch of get rich quick schemes like uh, like street performing or like donating plasma to see like what's the best way to make money quickly. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, All right. But I'm like thinking like, like there's got to be several benches and there's probably several people like like arguing over what's the best bench in this area. You know, that's where I'm bringing too much realism into this world. <laughs> Chris may be well, looking at like how are they owning a mouse that's not Mickey Mouse, but okay. <laughs> uh, so there's another character that we see here who's like uh, a super lucky duck. Is that his deal? What's this yes. guy's name? Uh, Gladstone duck. Gander. That's right. There we go. And him and Donald are talking and he says, hey, let's go, uh, you know, uh, outside the rich people's homes and we'll, we'll ask them for money. And somebody throws a hot dime into his hat that melts through the hat. And uh, Donald's like, oh, man, that, you're not lucky. And he says, nope, yeah, I am. And he, the, the dime digs a hole down into the snow where he finds a wallet uh, and gets a reward for finding the wallet and gives Donald $5. Great. What a weird way to get Donald $5, but it works. Um, and I think we finally got all the money we need. Which I like. That's a really bizarre. I mean, I guess I don't know if it was at the time, but like I, to call did you have a literal hot dime? I was like, what is this? Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't make make much sense to me. As Donald then takes this dime and says, "Boy, I don't need this anymore." Throws it into Scrooge's hat. Uh, it's not hot anymore, so it like doesn't burn Scrooge's hat. And Scrooge goes to put this dime in his safe from the roof to toss it in, and this is like the straw that breaks the camel's back. All of Scrooge's money goes, like, falling into this big hole, uh, like a cave system, and it just goes, like, blah, 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 down to the bottom. At this point, I was like, whoa, this comic took a turn, because it is no longer about Christmas. It is about hiring <laughs> engineers to figure out the best way to retrieve Scrooge's missing money from this massive cave system. And I gotta tell you, I was into it. They got some weird machines. They got some charts. They got some graphs. And finally, they say, "You know what? It can't be done. Sorry, dude." And they're out of there. Um, and Scrooge is so sad. His life is basically over. He moves in with the ducks. He moves in with Donald and Huey, Dewey, and Louie. 
uh, very quickly because he's just so sad, eating all their food. <laughs> uh, <laughs> real asshole, this guy. There, uh, you're right. There's like never any like now it's now turned like now I'm going to learn the meaning of Christmas for Shacktown or anything like that. Like Shacktown is done at this point. I mean, it comes. Yeah. Back. But like, like this. Is, yeah. I, I feel like Barks was told like write a Christmas story and he's like, fuck you. And <laughs> now like, I'm going to say <laughs> He did learn a lesson because of all the... So they go uh, into this cave system underneath on their own. They're like, I bet we can find it. And they do. Uh, Scrooge can smell the money. He's like, it's through this crack. How are we going to get through there? Um, And, you know, one of the things the engineers were saying was like, okay, yeah, we could do it, but if we use machines and stuff, it's going to make too much noise. It's going to fall down into the next cave, which is full of quicksand. Then your money's going to be gone <laughs> forever. That too. There's like an extra layer of like, well, why can't you do this? We've thought of this. Uh, yep. you know, reader, if, you, if you think there's quicksand, well, shit, we can't get past quicksand. Nope, nope. you can't. That's- but, <laughs> but Huey, Dewey, and Louie do have something that can fit into this tiny little hole. It's a toy train. Oh my God, Scrooge, you got got. A toy train, which you thought was the dumbest shit ever, is now going to rescue your money. Bam, look at you. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how this toy train is, like, grabbing money and bringing it yeah, down. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, and so uh, they have enough money to have a, a wonderful Christmas for Shacktown. These Shacktown kids, it was in some scene in the middle of the book where they're, uh, they're sitting there, they're talking about... Uh, how, like, oh my god, I heard that they were going to get us a toy train. Like, would you all imagine how much fun we can have with this toy train? We can go, like, uh, you know, build the set over by that kid who, who's in a wheelchair so he can enjoy it too. And man, these Shacktown <laughs> kids, they're warm in my heart. What good people. Yeah, and meanwhile, Scrooge, he's like, he's like, you boys have done me such a service that uh, the first uh, train coming back with money, you can keep whatever's on it. And they're like, oh, there's thousand dollar bills on it. And he faints. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so everyone's having a good Christmas, except Scrooge, who has to sit there waiting by this train because it's moving very slowly. And his money, uh, according to his calculations, is going to take uh, 272 years to, to, get, to make it to him. Uh, the last panel of this book is a little bit strange. It felt like it was meant to be a callback to like how annoying the sound of this train is, but I think it's the first time it came up, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like Donald and Scrooge holding their ears while this train goes toot toot. Um, I yeah, was a little confused. Yeah, that is a weird end. I don't know if yeah. these things like bled into things that like this collected edition maybe doesn't have like when it was like four color comics or whatever the original thing these were published in like it may have just like gone into something weird and then just cut off there i don't really know yeah i don't know maybe maybe every comic that month ended with uh a toot toot and them holding their ears and <laughs> well i mean it could be like you know like and now order your own free train kids you know like it could have just gone there or some shit like, I, don't I don't know honestly, i don't honestly know weird. Um, but still a uh fun story uh that duck man carl barks that good duck artist <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, and then Scrooge, of course, and once he once he moves in with the Duck Boys, he's now in his other classic costume, which is the the red coat, which yep. is what he <clears throat> I think wore more in the comics, but didn't he wore the blue in the car, for original cartoon, um, in the video game, and, or no, did he? Really, I don't know. And then the red is in the new comic or the new cartoon is his his actual. Um, yeah, I feel like I definitely haven't seen as much of the red personally. I haven't watched the new cartoon. Yeah, th- um, there was a big deal again for Disney nerds. They were like, he's wearing the red more than the blue now. Whoa. I do like that dude DuckTales cartoon. It's really, really good. Um, uh, one day I might try it again. I, it's fun because like it's calling back. To, I, I can see like callbacks, you know, that, you know, because I watched the DuckTales cartoon obviously more than this. I'm like, oh, this is what they're referencing. Like people have like read these. Um, it's fun. I like it. Yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, I would read more Duck comics for sure. Uh, I know we were only doing two of them here. Uh, eventually, little by little, we're going to read the full Duck collection. We got <laughs> the whole, the whole. Yeah, we, we read an issue from two different volumes that were each like twenty twenty dollars a piece, I think. So yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of them. There are so many Duck comics. This one out was there. like thirty five pages. This one was like a double sized. 
or yeah, it was a big a one. They were yeah, awesome. Shack Town was really bad. I feel like I'm gonna definitely just like my my son's about to turn six. Um, I feel like this is gonna be a good one to just sit down and and read with him. Yeah, if, yeah. If, if yeah. he'd be into it, like I don't know, like I, like, but I I do think this is one that you could easily give like a, a six a six year old, and they could get into. Yeah, it. for sure. I mean, like, and if he knows who Uncle Scrooge is already, I mean, it's uh, yeah, the work is half done for you. He can do all the voices. Yeah, I feel like he'll be more like, "Where's Della Duck?" and like the other characters that like aren't in here. Um, oh yeah, Webby and such. I, Webby is really good on that new cartoon. Um, but yeah, um, it's Kitten. How? Creature. I have a question. How are you going to do Donald's voice if you read it to him? That yeah, be, yeah. I'm, I have to do, maybe have to do Don Cheadle's voice, um, which is very like yes. But um, I because Bruce, Bruce would probably be like, <laughs> oh Donald. <laughs> That's good. That was a good impression. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But Look, that's better words. than your son could do. Yeah, a gorge. I can do that. That's. I got that. We got. We got. I got the goofy impression down. Oh man, goofy. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, Maxie. Yeah, that's my. That's my goofy impression. Uh, Kia does a better one, <laughs> but. Uh, I can, uh, I can uh, Mickey, Sora. We have to save the kingdom hearts. <laughs> <laughs> Donald got um, marooned on an island on the new DuckTales cartoon for like half the season and he made a, a watermelon Mickey Mouse and it just kept quoting Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. It's like, so long! It was really funny. Thanks for that. And they uh, think about hot cute. dogs. It was good. It was really dumb. Um, Alright, that's fun that there's like, you know, weird Disney references on there. I'm, I'm, I'm into that. Yeah, it's, uh, but uh, I, I, yeah. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm definitely going to read more of these. Um, cool. I uh, want to read I that Don Rosa. Time. I think we need to read that Don Rosa. Something. I'm not sure if we should do that as a, like a long read or if we should just. Read it might it. be a better long yeah. read. I, I think we probably should because it's 12 issues. I think. Yeah, it's a, it, and they're dense. Yeah. yeah. All right. So uh, speaking of long reads, I think it's time to move on to Marvels now. Uh, with uh, issue number two, last issue was all about the Golden Age. Uh, you know, World War II era heroes. Uh, now we've uh, jumped into the 60s. Uh, our main character, Phil. Phil. What was his last name again? Not, uh, not Spectre. Sheldon. Sheldon. We, we, we covered this last time. Um, it is weird though that it doesn't he, it doesn't jump from the cliffhanger of the last issue, where they were like storm, the they were like storming a Nazi stronghold. Um, the not the invaders, whatever they were calling them, basically Captain America and. I I wouldn't call that a. I don't think that was a cliffhanger. That yeah. was like a. Uh, hey, look at all the heroes of the day. Yeah, Vince, Vince, I'll spoil it. We won World War II. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. good. Oh, good. Thank goodness, because that would have been bad otherwise. <laughs> Baron, been Baron Zemo defeated. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the man in the high castle is not the real history. Okay, got it. Check it no. out. Got it. And if you remember from those Captain America movies, it was mostly Hydra we were fighting. Oh, yes. Well, I mean, I'm not going to buy my kid Nazi action figures. Like, that's not a good idea, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hydra action figures, though. Totally cool. Totally fine. Um, they got all a cool, right. like, octopus snake. It's fine. So we're in the 60s. Uh, so Phil, the photographer, I guess he's, like, 40 now, maybe a little bit older. He's been, as like, a seasoned photographer. Uh, he's talking about how, uh, you know, we got all the heroes of the day starting to spring up. The weirdest of all, like, Captain America's back. Like, shit, that was cool. Um it's, you know, he's kind of dreaming of putting together a collection of all his photographs, talking to some publishers. He's having a good time. Everybody's enjoying it, except, like, there's one thing that's sitting kind of weird. It's fucking mutants, man. Mutants popping up. And, like, we can't trust them. They're out to kill us. And they're out to take over the world. And this is not okay. Yeah. So the and, human. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, and but it's like a, it's, uh, you know, it's showing them on the street, like the mutants and, you know, it's obviously like racial, you know, civil rights parallels. Um, you know, but even Phil Sheldon throws a fucking rock at the X-Men, which I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, that was crazy. I'm like, Phil, are we like, the bad guys here? Like, uh. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy that they let the main character like do that. Like, you know, he, he we see him kind of grow and learn and everything, but it is a great way to just be like, no, this is fucking everywhere. Like, nobody trusts humans. Um, mutants, and, you know, yeah. there's lots of these. We kind of see how all the other superheroes are almost celebrities. The Fantastic Four is being very idolized. Uh, like, Stark. I guess Stark hasn't revealed his identity. But we see, like, all these benefits that are being thrown. Real, real hoity-toity. 
Um, and, you know, one night uh, Phil well, gets home. Well, I'm, I want to take a step back, though. Like, the problem yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have, um, like, what I like about this book is that it's fairly historically accurate to, like, sequences, like, you know, like, them revealing you know the fantastic four they're revealing themselves like the johnny storm's like four in the sky and then later issues like it covers it covers marvel events through their through their lens and so like avengers number six i think is in here with like what is it like agent x or some whatever that cloud gas thing is yeah like, that's a real yeah baron marvel. zemo right that's a real marvel comic but and like kurt music like very much was like went through and made this matrix of okay i'm only going to show sequences that real people could have seen so like there's not really going to be much like thor because thor is always off world or not where people um specifically phil would ever see it so that's why there's not a lot of thor in this book but that x-men scene where they're like attacked and then they look menacing like that's not from any x-men comic like that's wholly made up and so my i got a minor disappointment that it's they couldn't pull out like any x-men comic like of them looking scary to humans you know yeah, I mean, I, I mean, guess so. I mean, it's well, just, I think, that's the okay, only thing so that seems like made up wholesale for me, which I'm like, mm. sure. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. I feel like the X Men being good was like retconned because early X Men was fucking terrible and like didn't touch <laughs> on any of the racism stuff, and it was just like, blah. It was not like I've tried to read a lot of it, and I just had to had to give up on it. Uh, <laughs> so I feel like I am siding with Kurt Busiek here on making them interesting right off the bat instead of, uh, yeah. Yeah. Like how yeah, they well, and it's, Yeah. And it's funny because it's, you know, it, he only encounters good mutants. He doesn't run into like, I don't know, the blob or uh, toad or the Morlocks or somebody, uh, who's going to like just reinforce his negative stereotypes that he already has. Instead, it's only heroes who are like, Oh, these humans, they're the worst. Yeah, it's like I think Cyclops says uh, like, "Oh, he's not worth the time," or something like that. And he like the, he kind of gets he feels a little something from that. Um, and like this moment, I thought was a really strong moment where he. Uh, sh- so at this point, he's like you know been married for a while, has two little girls, shows up one day, and there's a little mutant girl in their basement that his kids have been playing with and like kind of keeping down there, and he's just like fucking terrified like what am i going to do like this thing is trouble and i don't know like i'm kind of like it's got this big eyes that he's like so sad about like i want to help this person but if anyone knows i'm harboring a mutant they're gonna burn my damn house down uh and like do i even really want to help this mutant like it's but to his credit at least he's like i do remember how it was in nazi germany he does yes, remember it. Yes, Un- does. Unlike a lot of Americans, he does remember how, mm-hmm. you know, like standing up to Nazis mm-hmm. is a good thing. He remembers this. Yes. And he like immediately like applies like, well, I have to do this. I have to protect this kid. So good on you, Phil. Good on you. Phil. Good on you. Good on you. Um, so uh, so uh, Sue Storm and uh, Reed Richards announced their engagement while he's, you know, doing all this research, trying to figure stuff out. Um then there's a, they they announced the Sentinel program on TV, and well, yeah, said, well, at the same time, sorry, um, so I, I, it's kind of we have a, we also have Reed and Sue's wedding, which is I think maybe the first thing we've actually oh sorry they, yeah. they covered that we actually covered on this podcast. That was one of my favorite oh. issues, um, Fantastic Four Annual number three. Although I th- this one says that there was it's crazy that no one attacked this wedding, and I'm like. Um, everyone attacked this wedding. It was awesome. Yeah, like I was kind I of, I was kind that. of miffed there. I was like, that this is an inaccurate retelling because that was awesome. That was my favorite issue. Um, <laughs> I think that may have been my favorite issue of one of the years we covered it. Yeah. Um, but I love that. And then, but and apparently, publishing schedule wise, this announcement of the Sentinel um, happened the exact same month in uh, Marvel Comics and like real publishing world. And Kurt was like. Phew brain yeah. like i have to yes. put this in now <laughs> so like the the, the the x-men went to this wedding which apparently they weren't bad guys at um and then, and then like got their whole like lives just changed later that night which i find really cool so mm-hmm. good job Kurt mm-hmm. Busiek. yeah it's nice uh so yeah these sentinels kind of go crazy they're backfire not backfiring they're like uh, malfunctioning and turning on humans 
Um, what ends up causing these riots that people were... Uh, I forgot what happened there. It was related to the Sentinels, right? The mutant yeah, stuff? Yeah, I got kind of confused on that, too. I'm not very sure. Uh, yeah. I guess it's just all the hysteria of, like, this event happening on TV. But it's not really made clear, like, why there's suddenly a riot. And then yeah. I like I like that Phil now has to like save uh, the girl who's wearing the like Read and Sue Forever T shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, he's he's like kind of making sure everybody's okay here. Then he realizes, uh, you know, he's got to worry about his family. They've got the mutant girl there, and like they he goes to check on her, but she left a note because she was like, "I don't want to cause y'all any trouble. I'm just gonna go." Uh, we're just like, "Damn, man!" We're, I am gonna steal happened? your daughter's clothes though. <laughs> yeah. She also um, wrote it to Mrs. Sheldon. She didn't write it to Phil. Yeah, nobody, <laughs> nobody cares about him. Um, and uh, is that the end of the issue? There, he's just kind of sitting there, like uh, you know, thinking about the future. He's just thinking about things. You know, this Phil. He's just a thinker. Oh, and Iron Man's <laughs> gonna fight Titanium Man. Is like announced yeah. on TV. Yeah, there's a lot of Easter eggs in yeah, there. Yeah, all throughout. Kind of mentioned. I really loved Alex Ross. I mean, of course, Alex Ross, the, the, the amazing art. His uh, picture for uh, uh, Reed and Sue's wedding is great. But I really love his de- depiction of Radioactive Man, uh, who's just like a kind of chubby green dude like with a backpack full of chemicals. <laughs> and I love it. I love seeing Alex Ross's realistic style paint some of these crazy things. Yeah, because like, he, he uses like real people for his models, so they're not as like chiseled. As, as superhero yeah. sometimes, so some people are a little doughy and have like more weight to them, and I really appreciate that. Yeah, it's great. Um, what else was there? There, you know, lots of great little touches all throughout. We see J. Jonah Jameson again, who doesn't look like he's aged a day. Uh, and apparently, yeah, I was reading all the notes and like the back back end of this. There, there, technically, Ben Yurk didn't really ever show up in a Marvel comic until 1978. But they, he was yeah. he was presented as a seasoned bugle reporter, so they're like, yeah, he's probably there. <coughs> yeah, he's I think a Frank Miller creation, wasn't he? Well, he might have been. He might have been. I think so. Yeah. Um, but also, they made Busey tried to make it very clear that he he went to Phil originally sold uh, pictures to the Daily Globe, um, which is a bugle competitor. He cause it, yeah. trying to further cement that he was a he, uh, Phil is a freelance photographer. Because I guess Peter mm-hmm. Parker sells photographs to the same dude. Um, yeah, in like and I mean, he, Peter briefly worked for the the Daily Globe and was like, "Oh, this guy's so nice. I like him." In the eighties, <laughs> <laughs> like Bushkin or something was that the name? Something like that. Something like that. Yeah, Bumpkin. Something like that. Yep. And then the uh, the mutant girl is based on a like fifties EC comic by Wally Wood. Oh wow! Ooh. Really. Yep. So, like, there's a lot of references and Easter eggs that are like not, you know, that are pretty deep cuts. Like, that's one where I definitely would not have gotten that without the annotated version, which has a bunch of these, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Have we read anything with Wallywood on this show? No, I'm gonna make a serious push for like, um, I mean, I, we we decide this us three, but like, I think we should definitely do some imp- uh, some EC comics or in some Tales from the Crypt for this Halloween. We, sure yeah because i've fun. never read any of that 50s like comics that basically created the comics code and killed ec comics yeah. like, i've never <laughs> i've never read it uh, yeah yeah we just did was it tales from tales of suspense or something like that we we have done some 50s marvel right yeah because we did the we were first issue of groot <clears throat> yes the first and also um, the hank pym man in the Ant Hill. that's tales to astonish yeah 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 um, I haven't read uh, like barely any Wally Wood except for like a few issues of Daredevil that he he drew early on in Daredevil, which looks so damn nice. I would love to read some Wally Wood at some point. We got to like remember his name uh, to read we'll some PC stuff. Whatever we got with him, uh, and um, yeah, that's pretty much the end of this. Uh, Nice. Like I, th- I don't think there's much resolution to plots that we can expect from these. It's a lot of uh, just kind of seeing human society integrated with superheroes and all these weird events, and just kind of is this? Would you call this book fan servicey? I think it is. Yeah, I, it's, yeah. I think it kind of is. I mean, I think it is, but it all at the same time, um, I I read this as my introduction to the Marvel universe, like. 
That's true. Like, it, to, it works well on its own. To be yeah. like, I mean, it put everything in context of like this is when it was published. Is how, the, and, and it, it's not entirely accurate. But I mean, I guess that's fine. Close uh, enough. Yeah, it's close enough. It's a story. Um, but like next issue is the uh, Galactus trilogy, which is my only interaction with that Galactus story. Is is uh, Marvels? Uh, we never read um, the Fantastic Four. No, story. I've been wanting to. Uh, yeah, it's what, like forty seven through forty nine. I think is what it is. We've never read that for the show. I've always wanted to read it. Um, and, and then I think the, the issue four is maybe the death of Gwen Stacy, which was the first time I ever saw the death of Gwen Stacy was in that. Wow. Was in Marvels. Hmm. So. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting too. Like, it has a very like Mad Men vibe. Everybody's wearing hats. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, it's the very like '60s uh, way where he's like, "Well, at least we're safe here in the suburbs." And then Alex Ross just draws the same house, you know, like twenty times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like, it's all it's it's cute and everything, uh, but it's also funny because it's like you can't really do that. Like Marvel time kind of ruins this idea the longer it goes. Mm-hmm. Because the whole idea is that, like, oh, like, the heroes came back. They've been gone for, like, 10-plus years, and now they're here to help us again. Um, And, you know, it doesn't really make any sense with, like, Marvel time of, like, oh, Spider-Man's... I think Peter Parker, you can see, taking pictures at the wedding. Uh, And then, you know, of course, here he is, like, 50 years later. Right. Yeah, yeah I, that's why I'm eager to, when we when we dive into uh, Eye of the Camera, the sequel to Marvels. Like, I don't know how far it can go. Yeah, because because I mean, does it go to the '90s? Does it go to the 2000s when it was made? Because at that point, Phil has got to be 85 at the at the at the youngest. Yeah, I'm sure it. I'm sure Spider Man has and to I, be 55. Like that. Does, maybe it's... maybe his consciousness gets put into a different body. That happens in comics all the time. Yeah, That's maybe true. he gets de-aged into a baby and then aged back up into Ooh, a middle-aged man and, like Magneto. And, and all the Marvel heroes have to do that too. Yes, got it. Maybe maybe he gets pushed out of a plane and uh, falls into a frozen lake and uh, and years later they uh, thaw him out. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That yeah, could be it. Seems likely. It's probably it's a clone from me. his eye that he lost. That's what I would Oh, bet. shit! This all reminds me of a really bad... Uh, was it... Secret Avengers issue where uh, Black Widow argues with the the TMZ people. (laughs) Look, it's really sad when I think a hero is dead, finding out whether they die or not. Like, it's such a wrongheaded idea for a story. (laughs) Um, All right. So, uh, yeah, we'll continue reading Marvel's next time. Um, I did like this issue, I think, more than the first one, just because... I have more of a connection to 60s Marvel yeah. and all these char- classic characters. Um, Funny, too, because this is, uh, I mean, we just read 1602. Exactly, uh, yeah. Characters. Yeah. We see Wasp is here now. We've got Janet uh, in in the background. Of, yeah, like, the you see fashion, yeah. Fashion, and then I think she's also uh, at Alicia Masters' sculptures. Yes. All right, so next time we are going back to some uh, Jim Starlin stuff. Wait a minute. Hold on. Did Jim Starlin actually do this comic that I'm going to talk about? I'm I don't know. 99% sure he did. <laughs> we okay, didn't look great. up the credits, did we? <laughs> great. Uh, so we, we didn't, but it's a Thanos story where he dies, and I can't imagine. He'd be like, yeah, go ahead. I don't care. We'll, we'll let you know if we're wrong. Yeah, we are reading Marvel. Oh, yeah, it's, Star- it's Starlin. <laughs> great, great. <laughs> Marvel 2-in-1 Annual number 2. Uh, it's been a little while since we read some Starlin, and this was uh, an issue that was the death of Thanos. Uh, we've never read this. Um, I think we, when we were reading uh, the Infinity Saga, like he's coming back and getting all the rings and everything, he was returning from death. So this is how he died. Um, Marvel 2-in-1 was like kind of a Marvel team-up book, but starring the thing. Uh, so this annual, uh, annual number 2, <laughs> Excuse me. Was the thing and Spider Man teaming up? I guess to kill Thanos. I don't know how that happened. All right, cool. This is a rad cover, by the way. I don't know if you're looking at it right now, but it's, I have not. I haven't. It's seen got it yet. Thanos holding Spider Man like crumpled above his head, and he's throwing it onto the thing, and then like Adam Warlock's like in a bubble, like behind it, like growling. I love it. Yeah. Look at, of course, Adam Warlock. This is going to be side. amazing. Adam Warlock re- reunites with Gamora and Pip the Troll within the Soul Gym. I suppose it says Spider Man and the Thing find themselves on board Thanos' ship and besieged by his legions. It sounds rad. Yeah. yeah, it's got, I mean, just on the cover, you see like little head bubbles of Thor, Captain Marvel, Guy Captain Marvel, 
Captain America, Moon Dragon, Vision, Beast, Scarlet Witch, and Iron Man. So like it's two in one with like a hell of a lot of characters. Great Marvel two twenty in one. Yeah, because I think I think I mean I think this ep- that next episode comes out on New Year's Day, but it was a big year for Thanos. Um, this past actually past two years. So let's just ring in the new year by remembering Thanos one last time. <laughs> I will remember. And also, and also, it's Death Month again. Pa pa pa. Oh no. Oh no. January Death Month. Okay, great. <laughs> uh, we'll read lots of death stories. Can't wait. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, oh, and, oh, sorry. Also, Marvel's number three. Got to mention that. I think I already mentioned it. All right. It's great. <laughs> uh, Chris, I love you. Uh, yeah, that's great. All right, Vince, I love you. Merry Christmas. Oh, wow. Uh, I'm Kia. Wonderful. I love all of you listening to the show. Uh, happy, and, uh, Merry Christmas. Yeah, happy Merry Hanukkah. Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy, um, happy Boxing Day for our British <laughs> listeners, our Commonwealth listeners. Yes, we have a lot of them over there. Um, and uh, we will see you next time after the holidays. Uh, get good and fat uh, so we can eat you right up. Eat all them turkeys. Yeah. Good night, everybody.